So the social political situation of the mid 20th century and certainly World War II and the explosion of the atomic bomb formed a truly seminal influential experience in the development of the art of the American artists. For example, Barnett Newman had said that after the monstrosities of war, they were all looking for a new way to look at art, because how can things be the same again? It was a kind of purification, if you like, of everything that had come before and um, allowed this sort of myth to develop about the Stunde Null, which was the zero hour, um, the idea that you, know, you could forget German history, you could forget German civilization, and you could start at the beginning, uh, if you like, at the origin. Now that idea of starting at the origin was also something that uh, was expressed by, for example, Barnett Newman in America, whose idea was somehow to find what he called the original impulse, the original impulse to make art. And he would look at um, Mesoamerican uh, and uh, American Indian art and feel that actually that was, if you like, a direct expression of the feelings of the people who made them. And that's what he was after as well. So he was also going for, if you like, a, an equivalent to a Stunde Null, but from a de very different perspective. In America, we have these Farbfeldmalereien, for example, from Clifford Still, Barnett Newman, Mark Rothko, where it's about transcendence, geht, auch eine Suche nach dem Spirituellen. It's an existential question about the role of man after this Aufarbeitung of the Second World War. But there were other artists within the abstract movement, um, for example, Jean Fautrier in uh, Paris, or even Antoni Tapies in Spain, um, or Fritz Winter even in, in Germany, who were engaging uh, with the immediate past, or Alberto Burri is exactly the same. They were talking, if you like, or engaging with their wartime experiences and using art in a way to process trauma. Was wir in Paris speziell sehen, sind Bilder, wo wirklich Trauma verarbeitet wird, körperliche Wunden, Kratzer oder Schürfungen in der Maloberfläche. The American artists were also, some of them, addressing the issue of trauma. Barnett Newman, for example, uh, would paint these zip paintings, which were paintings with vertical stripes, uh, um, all the time. So, you know, every painting is a zip painting, more or less. And what he was doing was, he wasn't so much repeating the image, but he was repeating the way in which he addressed an image or an addressed, if you like, a theme. He was trying to go through or rehearse the same issues and the same problem. And it was, in psychoanalytical terms, a working through, which is the same as you could say about the work of Alberto Burri in his sack paintings, they, they are like wounds, open wounds. Existentialism uh, was written about in a number of American journals in this period, beginning in the late 1940s. Articles by Sartre were being published, articles by Camus, and all these ideas were being taken on board by the abstract expressionists. On the one hand, certainly the existential themes and to deal with the human condition have entrance their work. And on the other hand, they were also looking for a new point of departure. They took on this notion of freedom. They took on this notion of um, self-disclosure. They took on the idea that there was no past and they just had to live for the present. And therefore, the works that they were making were expressing, if you like, how they acted, how they felt in the present as they made the paintings. So they tended to work in a more spontaneous manner than perhaps previous artists had. Die Künstlerinnen und Künstler wollten im Grunde keine Erzählung vorgeben, sondern sie wollten eine Präsenzerfahrung des Betrachters und der Betrachterin vor dem Werk. Oftmals ähm, wollten sie auch die Bilder möglichst tief hängen, damit man wie auf einer Bühne in der Betrachtungserfahrung in diese Bildfelder eintauchen kann. Und sie wollten keinen, keine Orientierung vorgeben, sondern wie im Existenzialismus zur eigenen Handlung, zur eigenen Positionsfindung, zur ähm, sich selbst sozusagen äh, Vergewisserung anleiten. The uh, abstract expressionists worked on a huge scale compared to uh, European painters at the time. 
European painters uh, painted what were called easel paintings. In other words, paintings that you could put on an easel. They might be this big by this big. Um, and American painters, the abstract expressionists, suddenly worked on paintings which, if you like, could be compared with 19th century European history paintings in terms of scale. Really large, you know, two, three, four meters wide or three meters high, which involved the use of the whole body. And that's the Maler sind die wirklich auf der Leinwand improvisieren wie ein Jazzmusiker wie Sonny Rollins, der ein Tenorsaxophon Solo spielt. So muss man sich vorstellen, arbeiten die Künstler vor ihrer Leinwand. They made gestures, some of them, uh, or you know, they painted on the floor, like Drax and Pollock painted on the floor, and he had to um, use his whole body and his arm as he swayed and dripped and made serpentine moves. And, uh, and this was something that was radically different. As we know with the Life magazine article in 1949, is he the greatest living painter in the United States? He sort of became the symbol, one might say, for the American Abstract Expressionist movement. European artists then developed similar practices and also began to work on a larger scale, but it was definitely something that was, at that moment, uniquely American. The other important thing was flatness. What the abstract expressionists did was eliminate space from the painting. There was no sense of architectonic structure. Und da bleibt nicht mehr viel übrig, um sonstige Dinge zu erzählen. Und so haben die Künstler verschiedene Bildmittel vereinzelt und als Einzelnes absolut gesetzt. Und das Deutsche Informell hat das eben zum Beispiel mit der Oberfläche gemacht. Also ein Künstler wie Karl Fred Dahmen hat so etwas wie schrundige Wände in Szene gesetzt in seinen Bildern. Und man schaut auf ein Bild von Damen wie auf eine alte, schlecht verputzte Hauswand. Oder ein Künstler wie Karl Otto Götz hat eben die Bewegung, die Geste, die Action verabsolutiert und einfach ein schwarzes äh, Liniengewirr entfaltet auf der Bildfläche. Und da ist dann nicht mehr von Komposition die Rede, es ist nicht mehr von Vordergrund oder Hintergrund im Bild die Rede, sondern man hat nur noch diese Bewegung. Und das Informell zeichnet sich eben dadurch aus, dass es so einen Endpunkt markiert, dass, dass danach auch nicht mehr viel weitergeht und das Bild keine Struktur mehr hat, sondern nur noch vergegenwärtigt, das ist Farbe, das ist eine Wand, das ist eine Geste und mehr bleibt nicht übrig. Das ist also eine Dekomposition, ein Schema, eine neue Betrachtererfahrung. Und vielleicht ist diese Idee des nicht-hierarchischen Bildfeldes auch ähm, die Idee, die die Farbfeldmaler mit den gestischen Malern in Verbindung bringt und die Verbindung herstellt zwischen diesen äußerlich erstmal so unterschiedlich erscheinenden Stilrichtungen. For a number of years, the contribution of the women artists associated with American post abstraction has been overlooked, and um, uh, the male artists associated with the women have gotten all the attention. Und bis heute ähm, scheint es häufig so, als sei der abstrakte Expressionismus rein von Männern dominiert gewesen, obwohl ganz, ganz viele Frauen maßgeblich zur Entwicklung der Nachkriegsabstraktion beigetragen haben. Wir haben in der Ausstellung Schlüsselwerke, die mir wahnsinnig am Herzen liegen, gerade von den Künstlerinnen wie Janet Sobel, Heather Stern, Janice Biala, Und auch in der Hängung-Installation haben wir darauf geachtet, mit diesen kanonischen oder nicht kanonischen Positionen zu spielen. Es ist nicht immer William de Koning, Barnett Newman oder Jackson Pollock, die auf Achsen hängen, sondern auch unbekanntere Positionen. One specific example uh, I can make um, of an artist, I think that has been overlooked, but that has been also seminal in the development of the work of someone like Jackson Pollock, a very celebrated, a well-known figure. Um, Janet Sobel, a Ukrainian-born artist. In fact, it is being said that when Jackson Pollock had seen her all over compositions, um, also possibly in a soul exhibition that Peggy Guggenheim had dedicated to Sobel, that he was then influenced also to take up such an all-over technique of painting his works for which then he came to be known so well. So indeed, this is just one of the examples. I think then there are many more stories to be still researched in the future, um, also in terms of the development of the work of the male artists that we know of.